Hi guys, Amy here. So, recently Hasbro showed us the new Transformers Legacy Chop Shop and Barrage, but most of you probably don't even know who they are. Well, let me introduce you to the Deluxe Insecticons. I know most of the community probably knows the Insecticons as the three black and purple bug guys that appeared near the end of Season 1 of G1 in 1984, but what if I tell you there are some Insecticons that sadly never made it to animation. We all know Transformers is a brand that started as adaptation of the Japanese series Diaclone. We all know the story. J. Joe goes to Japan, money issues, smaller molds, kids like robots, so they turn him into a cyborg, he gets a bunch of vehicles and armors, etc. Et et you know. But that is just the beginning of the story, as later part of the Diaclone plotline talked about the Waruders. An army of aliens that like air with the help of insect like mechs. You can see their past as alien mech suits in some design leftovers, like open cockpits or much less organic shapes, seeming like a spaceship that simply is supposed to mimic insects. While the deluxe insecticons, as Hasbro branded them, look much more organic, like something made by humans to mimic nature, cause that's what they were in Beatrice. With this Twitter thread made by Necronomitron as my source, I would like to give a little backstory to Deluxe Insecticons. Armored Insect Battalion Beatrus was a series created by Studio Artmic for Takatoku Toys. You know, the guys that made Armored Battalion Dorva. The issue was that Artmic made it right before Takatoku went bankrupt, which sadly left Beatrus cut short, only giving us six manga issues that were printed in the TV magazine. The story follows a battle between two rival clans of an underground city, Komun. The two clans were peaceful Ekim and warlike Gaim. The Gaim attacked the surface world, so Ekim created a team of mechanical armors shaped after insects named Beatras, which stands for Battle Expert Emergency Task Ranger Anthromobile System. The toy line consisted of Beat Gadol, a rhino beetle, Beat Gugal, a stag beetle, Beat Zeguna, a cicada, and Beat Vadam, a locust. There were also plans to make a female fight armor based on a ladybug. Beat Papil. Wait, doesn't Papillion mean butterfly? Never mind. But as I mentioned, the toy line got canned before she was even made. Even though Hasbro bought out the Beatrice molds, Atmic still owned the rights to the animation models and used them for Transformers clone called Beat 7. So neither Hasbro nor Takara could use the molds either for right reasons or for them not wanting to promote a rival brand. With that, the Deluxe Insecticons couldn't appear in the show. And even the comics didn't throw them a bone. Venom and Chop Shop got their butts handed to them in the Marvel comics, Ransack was a buddy in one of the Choose Your Own Adventure books, while Barrage? didn't even get that. All of these factors combined pushed them into massive obscurity. The Deluxe Insecticons started only getting their notoriety during the Dreamwave era, when people started getting nostalgic for their childhood toys. And I'm sure some kids got a different type of Insecticon than the one they saw on screen after they asked grandma for a toy. Let's talk about each Insecticon. Let's start with... Ransack! Uh, not this one. N no, not this one. Also not this one. Different answer. Different. No. Okay, maybe mm. something else. Let's Another look at Chop Shop. Chop Shop is a riddle of Pete Gall. His bio describes him as a kleptomaniac, who's always ready to swipe something valuable from under everyone's noses. And it's not even from Autobots. He often steals from other Decepticons, and even from himself. The more difficult something is to steal, Chop Shop just sees it as a challenge. Gluing, bolting, fusing something on an atomic level? It won't stop him from trying to swipe it. I always felt he's for some reason really liked by the Transformers toy team. Like, whenever all other Insecticons were getting nothing, Chop Shop started getting some love. He got this mini-sized mold of him in the Frame 30 toy line with Megatron, and even kicked out Kickback for a spot in the Combiner Wars toy line. After that, let's look at Barrage. Barrage uses the design of Beat Gadol and transforms into a rhinoceros beetle. Barrage believes in winning. No matter how ruthless and cruel, he's ready to do everything for the Decepticon cause. He will shoot retreating, sacrifice his shoulder and wound prisoners. Bah, Barrage doesn't even take prisoners. Even other Decepticons fear how far he goes with committing war crimes. This makes him rather dislike them on the Decepticons rank. Before the Legacy release, his only toy was this Creo one. But, fun fact, Combiner Wars Paul Mschelt did have a barrage head designed for a possible retool. And I'm sorry guys, but I need to be honest with you, 
I did mention that none of these Deluxe Decepticons ever appeared in the animation, and I'm going to be honest. <sighs> I lied, since Barrage appears as a cameo in this Family Guy sketch. Do as I command, and we will defeat the Autobots once and for all! Nope, not gonna work. Oh, come on, what did we talk about? Autobots always win. You think Optimus Prime's gonna be dead, but then he's not dead. I'm taking this from a robot that turns into a canoe? Yeah, this is his only on-screen appearance. Some animator probably just had the toy as a kid and really wanted to include him somewhere. Okay, other Amy. No. Did you finally Another find one. that ransack? Mm -hmm. Not this one. Not this one. Wait, 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 yes, that one, that one, go back! That ransack. Ransack is... Another a simple dude, a tough tucker who craves fight. The Decepticons really like having him on their team. The issue is that Ransack's mind is so simple that he often forgets to shoot around at his enemies, rather than just in their general direction, causing him to often damage his teammates. His special ability is generating local earthquakes by vibrating his legs. As a toy, Ransack is a redeco of Beta Vadan. He turns into a locust. Sadly, due to the mold limits, most of his model toys show him just as a yellow redeco of kickback, like this Buzz Wolfy Bumblebee release. Keeping up with the tradition, fan publication wanted to redeco for certain kickback into Ransack in 2014. The idea was to make him one of the Star Seeker pirates. And let's finish off this look with the Insecticon leader. <laughs> Yeah, leader. I did see some people wondering who leads them in the cartoon. It was kinda confusing, but from what I know, it was shown that it was Scrapnel with Bombshell wanting to take over his position. But the actual leader is... That doesn't help Venom's paranoia. Constantly being scared someone wants to overthrow him. This makes him trust no one. Always suspicious, gatekeeps, manipulates and lies. Sadly, this toxic attitude makes life hard for him, but his life isn't the only toxic thing with him. You see this spike on his head? That's a stinger, that's loaded with all sorts of chemicals that can damage mechanical bodies and organic tissue. But of course, the world can be too easy for him, since Venom needs to be careful not to snap it. As a toy, Venom is a redeco of Beat Zaguna. For a lot of time, this was the only toy of him up to 2014, when he got this purple red echo of Waspinator that came in a set with Acid Storm. Sadly due to the trademark issue related with probably some black and white spider alien goop man, he was renamed Venom. This purple Venom was also used as one of Waspinator's sons in the Legends manga. Yeah, purple. There's actually a pretty interesting story why Venom is suddenly purple. Well, originally he was supposed to have the usual Venom colors, green and orange. That was back when he was supposed to be packaged with Thundercracker. But due to reasons, Thundercracker was changed to Acid Storm, and Hasbro probably didn't want to sell a two-pack of green figures that would blend in together too much, so they redecoed him to be purple, as a complementary color to Acid Storm. So, now I hope you know the stories and personalities of the Deluxe Insecticons, and you are ready to go buy up the newly revealed two-packs. Ransack that was released a few years ago, and prepare your wallets for the leaked Venom that's supposed to come out in the year 2025. This material wasn't sponsored by Hasbro Incorporated or any other toy companies, but if you want to contact me, there's an email in the description. So, thank you for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out my other videos, and tell me, which Insecticon is your favorite? Do you hope they will return someday in animation? Do you want Hasbro to dig up the Beat Papillion concept as a new female Insecticon? Cause from what I saw, there is a lot of fan-made 3D models, 3D prints, DG bashes. Comment! Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out all my other videos, and bye!